Hey everyone, even if you know nothing about Soviet cameras, you will have seen this camera before. It's the famous Zenit E. It's probably the most produced SLR camera of all time. Uh, something like 8 million of these were made uh, in the Soviet Union from the late 1960s up until the early 1980s. And it's what most people think of when they hear the term Zenit when it comes to Soviet cameras. But the Zenit E was one of many Zenit camera designs. Uh, and this is uh, its precursor the Zenit 3M, which was released in 1962 and in production until 1970. It's a very simple SLR, one of the, the simplest uh, that I've ever used, but it's still capable of really good results and it's quite an interesting camera to use. So the Zenit 3M is a really, really simple design. Um, it's quite chunky because it's mostly middle construction, like most cameras were before the, the 1980s. Um, it has these lovely sort of smooth curved lines that almost feel like Art Deco. Um, it has a lot of traditional um, SLR controls. Uh, you know, you've got the lever wind, uh, you've got a shutter button at the top of the camera, but it's actually, um, it sort of owes a lot of its uh, design to Leica rangefinders from the 1930s. One thing which hints at that, that rangefinder influence is the bottom of the camera sort of separates and you load it like you would an old Leica or Zorki rangefinder. Quite fiddly uh, and the designers at KMZ who made the Zenit and Zorki lines of cameras uh, decided to do something uh, a little more modern uh, with the Zenit 3M and to give it a hinged back like you would find on more modern SLR designs in the West. So that's the, uh, the kind of back that you would have on SLR cameras right up until the changeover to, to digital photography. It makes the camera a lot easier to load rather than fiddling around with uh, the removable spool in a Zenit 3. The rest of it is a sort of halfway house between a Leica camera and uh, uh, an early SLR. You've got a fairly small range of uh, shutter speeds that are accessed via this um, shutter speed dial where you have to wind on, very important, wind on before you change the speeds and then you pull it up and then place it down again. That's very like the shutter dials on uh, Zorki cameras and, uh, and indeed Leicas from before World War II. The camera which the Zenit 3M took a lot of those design cues from was uh, the Zorki 6, which is one of the most usable Soviet rangefinder cameras. Again, it has a hinged back and an integrated take-up spool. Uh, which means that you're not uh, having to, you know, tape it to the camera apart, run the risk of leaving them behind. So, in a way, the, the 3M is, I suppose, a, uh, a Zorki 6 with a, an SLR prism on the top. Um, here's a couple of the reasons why I like this camera. It's really uncomplicated. It's got just enough controls. To, um, to shoot with and nothing that really gets in the way. If you look at the top plate of the camera, uh, I, in a reviewing this camera for Cosmophoto, I've talked about how I see this, this top plate as a, a bit of a design classic. There's, there's nothing here that doesn't need to be here. You've got your lever wind, which also includes your frame counter and your shutter button. You have the shutter dial where you change your shutter speeds. You have your film reminder uh, dial here, which uh, where you set the ISO of the film you're using. And that also doubles up as your rewind function. If you need to rewind uh, the, the film, then you use this and you press this button here, which is uh, part of the rewind uh, mechanism. So there's really very little to uh, get in the way of, of taking pictures, really. Zenit 3Ms are a really robust um, 
kind of beautiful cameras in a, in a very sort of 1950s, 60s way. This was in a period when KMZ was really trying to make attractive, um, well-regarded cameras. I mean, there's a, a lot of metal, there's a, a sort of a finish to this that maybe you don't get in later cameras. Um, but it, it really is very simple to use. It uses preset lenses, and so that means you um, turn the aperture up to its widest, in this case 3.5, uh, to compose, and then you um, close the aperture down to the right one needed for a correct exposure. It's a little more long-winded than using uh, automatic lenses like you might find on more modern SLRs, but um, after a while you sort of get used to it. Uh, I know of um, Russian photojournalists who were still using this principle uh, on old gear in the 1990s, so if it's good enough for them, you know, it's good enough for you. Zenit 3M is often shipped with uh, one of two lenses, either this one, which is the Indistar 50. It's a almost pancake um, style 50mm lens. Um, opens up to 3.5 um, and down to f16. I think it's a, a four element lens, so it's not the sharpest in the world, but certainly does the job. The other lens you find most common is the wonderful Helios 44, an early version of the Helios 44. It's a, a copy of a Zeiss sonar lens, 58 millimeter, and um, it's incredibly well regarded, uh, very popular with digital uh, photographers and videographers because of the way it renders out of focus highlights, uh, soap bubble bouquet, beautiful lens. Um, the Helios 44's uh, early versions were made in what's called the M39 mount, which is very similar to the L39 mount that was used in uh, Leica, early Leica, and uh, Zorki and Fed cameras. Uh, so it's a screw mount. And, uh, you know, they're not completely interchangeable, um, but they are the, the same thread mount, essentially. The other cameras to use the M39 mount were all Soviet cameras, um, the predecessors to uh, the Zenit 3M, like the Zenit 1 and the Zenit C, and a really short-lived um, interim design called the Crystal. A load of people thought the Crystal was uh, spectacularly ugly, and it only lasted in production for, I think, one or two years. Uh, I think it's quite charming, but um, I might be in a minority. I would say this, this was a camera that was aimed more at enthusiasts um, although I know it was used by quite a few journalists in uh, the Soviet Union and in Eastern Europe during the 1960s. Um, it's, a, like I said earlier, quite robust. If things go wrong with it, because it's essentially a 1930s camera with this cloth shutter inside, it's actually pretty easy to repair. You don't have any issues with electronics because the Zenit 3M doesn't have any electronics. It doesn't have a light meter. Um, so you're, you know, you use a, a accessory meter or another camera to meter light with. Um, quite a few of these were made, certainly not as many as the Zenit E, but it's part of the reason why they're so easy to find today. I think more than 750,000 were made which sort of points to the fact that it must have been a reasonably uh, reliable design because they would have pulled the plug a lot earlier if uh, they'd had too many problems with it. In the UK, you can still find a working condition example of this for as little as 20 pounds, 30 pounds with the, with the lens. Maybe not with the Helios 44, maybe more the, uh, the Indistar 50 lens, which is, absolutely fine to be starting with, but you really want to try and get your hands on one of these Helios lenses because they're just fantastic to shoot with. I would definitely re recommend this as a good example of a, a usable 1960s camera. The fact that it is so simple is one of uh, its strong points because at that 
at that time when you were starting to get selenium uh, meters or very early electronic um, features and cameras, um, that could be one of their Achilles heels in terms of um, the selenium cells dying or issues with the, that early sort of electronics um, failing over time. If you're really lucky, you might find a, a special edition of this camera which was released in 1967. Uh, and that was the 50th anniversary of the 1917 revolution. And it has this wonderful um, graphic on the top of the pentaprism showing uh, the, I think it's the Cruiser Aurora from the 1905 um, uh, Bolshevik uh, revolution. Uh, the star on top of the Kremlin and a, uh, a rocket heading up to the heavens. I think that's based on the cosmonauts memorial that uh, is still there in Moscow. Um, a really collectible camera. Um, you can still find them today. Uh, costs of these are, are probably more like 60 or 70 pounds. But uh, apart from this graphic on top, they're exactly the same camera underneath and still really usable today. What are the strengths and weaknesses of this camera? Well, like I said before, uh, pretty robust. Lots of metal in the construction. This is in the days before um, ABS plastics, so not a lot of plastic in a, in a 1960s Zenit 3M. Um, if stuff does go wrong, it's, it's very easy to fix, especially uh, the shutter. Shutter speeds you can often fix yourself uh, if they start lagging. Um, it's a really nice, uh, simple camera to use. Uh, it's not very complicated. Um, easy to find lenses still. Um, there were a lot of M39 mount cameras made in the Soviet Union. So there's a, a full range of uh, lenses that you might want to use um, from 37 mil up to 200, uh, 200 mil. It's a fairly flexible camera because you don't have a meter which might dictate um, which ISOs you're shooting. You could drop in f ISO 50 film or ISO 3200 depending on what you uh, want to shoot. Um, a bit like a, a rangefinder camera from the period. Um, what are the weaknesses in this camera? Well, you are using preset lenses where you have to uh, open the lens up to compose and then drop it down to the correct uh, aperture for exposure. So if you're not used to that, it, it can take a little while to get used to that style of shooting um, before we had sort of automatic um, aperture lenses that uh, made things a lot easier. You know, the kind of things that you would find on a autofocus camera from the 1980s or the 1990s. But um, just persevere with it once you try it for a couple of rolls, you, you should be able to, to grasp it pretty easily. Um, the lenses, uh, like I said, are fairly, um, fairly easy to find and because they're mostly metal, they're quite robust. Um, there's no plastic parts to shatter if you drop it. I've certainly dropped um, Helios and Indostar lenses a few times while changing them and uh, there's, there's no problem. If you want to learn more about the Zenit 3M, um, you can have a look at the the in-depth review on Cosmophoto uh, and keep an eye on the um, Cosmophoto shop, online shop in the future because a couple of these examples will be finding their way on there.